was just a flat world here. So what we had to really end up doing was adding about seven to eight inches of earth just all around the area, grading it, creating ditches, culverts, putting those in. And then we brought in 402 loads of, of dump truck dirt to kind of build and manufacture the Ozark world uh, in the Delta because we're in a really flat place and we have all these warehouses that we have to hide. Man, we're gonna need a lot. Yep. We're cut from the same cheese cloth. <laughs> How long are you gonna try this hole? I've set a 10 minute timer so we can't go past that. <laughs> if it's not, we'll just still be here at five o'clock today. <laughs> <laughs> Putting in four holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was crazy, a crazy idea to build the world himself. I know that Jordan has crazy ideas all the time and then he does them, so I was like, okay, it sounds great. Even the initial thing, I'm just assuming it's like a couple facades and it, it'll be really quick and it ends up being like this whole universe. So right now we have about 200 dump truck loads of dirt in here and as you can see, we've started shaping the land uh, to get it up to where we want it to be able to start facading it out to hide these warehouses. Um, and we've started getting detail into uh, some of the roadways. So we got a lay of the land, got the measurements of the, the area we wanted to build. Then we just went into unity, but then we just built it really crudely. We just built elevations and at that time we, we built like down six feet in the earth. I was like, I'll dig out six feet of dirt and then we'll pile it up and that'll be our mountains. And, when we, once we figured out that we were in a floodplain, that just completely wiped that out. We knew we would have to grade the whole thing and really build it up. That was a hard pill to swallow. It was myself first for a month. Then my dad came in. Then you came in, and then we brought Matthew Price in. So our typical day here on set, we all get up at 6 a.m., we eat breakfast, we drive over here, and we just get to work. Just a lot of building and Home Depot trips, but our goal is that this looks like a town from 1867. So while Jordan and the crew were building the set, I would be off in a corner somewhere on the set sometimes, working on the shot list. And those ideas would sometimes change where buildings were located. What are we checking out? We were trying out uh, EG products, wire pool smoke. I'd also come to set and we'd try out other ideas. We got the smoke bombs and tested those out. Aaron's walking through. I mean, it's a little pink. Okay, when Matt's ready, turn back around and come through. I took the files to my computer and color corrected them and we saw what it would look like as red and we're like, okay, this isn't so bad. This will work nicely. I'm sure for them it was a nice break, but then they had to go back to building the set. I mean, you put in just one. That's the only one that had. Next one was eight inches long. That wasn't. Oh, really? Well, of course, George is my son. He's one of my two sons, and. Uh, I guess I'd like to see them achieve their dreams. So I, if I can help out, I try to help out. So that's really the way I got involved. Is he asked me to help him a little. So. Well, I try not to. The 
role that I play, I, I, I suppose, is just, uh, well, I, I kind of advise, but I, I just help and do what I can. I think he and I had been through a lot of builds. We always had real conversations about what I was doing and why I was doing it. And to know that he is such a logical man and what I was doing was so on the outside seems so crazy. The fact that he got it, I was like, he really understands me. Cause I do, I know why I'm doing stuff and having dad kind of being like, I know what you're doing. It's kind of like, cool. Even if he's the only one. <laughs> He'll give me a problem, and I, I like to try to solve the problem, you know, how you can make something happen or be creative, and uh, I think that's part of it, solving some of the problems he comes up with. <laughs> it's this kind of a uh, project that doesn't have blueprints. <laughs> so we have to kind of improvise a lot of times and uh, fly by the feet of your pants, so to speak, I guess. We just uh, make it up as we go. So it, it involves a lot of trying to think ahead to avoid problems and to uh, make it as quick and easy as we can. So that's, whether that's my job or not, I, <laughs> we just work together, I guess. Foreman, emotional support. He's 70 years old and he pushes me. He is the perfect person for me to look up to. We don't come from much, so like all we have is our integrity, all we have is our work, all we have is us. And this is just how we exist. And it's, it's fun because it was what we had to do, and now it's what we get to do. And now all of that work, people are starting to understand like, oh, they do everything and they'll do it with nothing. As the world feels like it's shutting down COVID-19, everyone's having to do their part to deal with it. We are in a unique position to be in pre-production on a film, have the ability to continue to pay our department heads to work from home. Now, you'll see us continue to post daily updates because my dad and I and Matthew and Aaron live together and we go to work. And that's the two places we go. Luckily, we're in an isolated area to build the town we're still creating, we're still making film, but we're just doing it in a different way. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll continue to post updates. I had a timeline. We were keeping to it pretty well. I had always planned on the last three weeks to bring in a big crew and help me push to the finish. So at that moment, emotionally, I was like, we have to pull off something with four people that I was planning on bringing the team in. So the last like two months of this thing was just agony. Everything was moving so quickly and we, we considered pushing and then we were trying to weigh the options. We're like, well, this is a pandemic. We know we're safe right now in our bubble. If we wait until the fall, maybe it'll be worse. We wait till next year. We want to make sure everybody could be safe before we brought them to set. So pushing back was a way to ensure we had thought it over enough. We just said, okay, if we're going to do it, we need to do it as safely as possible and do it now. And for us, we felt like this was a great opportunity to not let people down. Love it. <laughs> we wanted to make sure we had as many bases covered when we got to production so there wouldn't be surprises. So we did some special effects tests. We did some movement tests with the ghosts to see if there's some movements we could pull off. So we'll do start where you started before mm -hmm. and then come to that spot first. Okay, awesome. And you want me to follow him? 
I think it'll work better without the green screen work, just because the light is, is inconsistent. Camera is rolling. We ended up not using any of them as we wanted to keep the ghosts more, more veiled, but uh, it was an interesting test and it definitely led us to more ideas. That's great. Like Matt won't even stand up when he films. Someone get me a water. <laughs> Well, once I make a feature film, I will have made it. Everything changes so gradually that like, it's hard to remember to look back and look at the progress. We have gone so far so fast, but when we're always so focused on what's next, you forget to look back and see how far you've come. So this is gonna be the first uh, Insta story. So it's day two, day three, it's day five. Day nine, 15, 24, 38, 46, 61, 70, 94. When you want something this bad, like this is what we wanna do for the rest of our lives, like this is the point. You just have to, you just don't, you just can't stop. You just cannot stop. And I'm really glad we just don't stop.